Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking, what personality type are you? So which of the 16 personality types, which of the 16 personalities are you? How do you know your personality type? Today we'll walk through all the basic dichotomies, the cognitive functions, and how to know your personality type. So first, let's start off with extroversion. So on one hand, we have extroversion. And extroversion is pretty much simply about initiative. So your ability to take initiative, your ability to enjoy fast-paced action, your ability to want things to progress, your ability to want things to move forward. Extroverts have an energy flow which is starts in the environment around them and in making things happen and then getting things from your environment. So you have a gatherer style. You think about and you want things to happen. You want to learn, you want to get information, you want to make decisions and you want to make decisions at a relatively quick pace. The faster the pace, the more extroverted you are. Secondly, on the other hand, we have introversion, the turtle. So introverts are most defined by their patience, their ability to take things slowly, their ability to do things methodically, their ability to think about and process and to reflect on and to form an idea and then to execute it as they want it to happen in their environment. So introverts, they start with an idea or a theory, and then they go into their environment, and then they think about how do I make it happen? And a lot of the time that takes patience, and that takes care, and that takes caution, and it requires a bit of calibration because you want things to happen exactly like you manage, imagine it to happen. You want things to follow a certain instruction or a certain guidebook or a certain set of rules. And that is what defines an introvert. So if you are on the corner of wanting to make things happen and wanting to get things from your environment, you're an extrovert. If you want things to happen relatively fast, you're more extroverted. If you are on the corner of introversion, you want things to happen more slowly, you take things more methodically, and you proceed with more caution. So that is the fundamental dichotomy of introverts and extroverts. Secondly, are you an intuitive or are you a sensory type? So intuitives are on one end, the personality type that first values ideas. Intuitives value learning, novelty, possibility, theory, abstraction. On the other corner, we have the sensory type. The sensory type values practice, rehearsal, duty, role, expectations. The sensory type values experience, structure, and things you can prove with data. So the intuitive type is most interesting in the sense that as an intuitive, you primarily want to learn new things, start new projects, think about new ideas, come up with new theories. On the sensory side, you have the experience-oriented types. These types want to make things happen. They want to have experiences. They want to practice. They want to master. They want to know how something works 100%. They want to have clear instructions. They want to have things to follow a certain guideline. They want stability. So on one end, you have the intuitive type that is okay with starting up new projects, but often struggles with finalizing a project. On the other hand, you have the sensory type that prefers to show discipline and to show resilience. Sensory types are more resilient, and that means they handle more, they are tougher, they are more thick-skinned, they get discouraged less easily, they keep going no matter what happens. They can handle the heat, they can handle the pressure, and they can put in the last extra steps of effort necessary if it is important to them. The intuitive type has issues with follow-through. They have issues with the sensitivity. They have issues with sometimes even being highly sensitive. They are types that need more time to recharge their energy. They get demotivated more easily. They lose interest in an activity faster. So if you are on the end of struggling with motivation, but having lots of ideas, seeing lots of potential, seeing lots of opportunities, but feeling inconsistent, feeling like you are constantly jumping between things, that you never commit to something, you're on the edge of intuitive. If you are on the other side of being able to follow through, being disciplined, being structured, being stable, being consistent, being dependable, being reliable, you're on the edge of sensing. Now let's talk about feeling and thinking. Are you a feeling type or are you a thinking type? So feeling types are interesting because they value benevolence. 
They are less motivated by conflict and discussion. They have less of an interest in competing and in winning and in being the best and in improving and in efficiency and in productivity. They are more inclined towards diplomacy, teamwork, cooperation, charity, giving, and being a part of the community or connecting with the community. So when you talk feeling types, you talk about people that want to connect with the community, people that want to be liked by others, people that want to uh, have a st uh, stable role in the community, people that want to be appreciated by others, people that value feedback, people that value and listen to other people and their opinions and thoughts. On the thinking side, you have people that are more competitive and more scientifically inclined. The thinking types are more prone to thinking about themselves. That means they are more focused on what they know, what they want, what their goals are, what their targets are, what their expectations are. They set their own rules and expectations for themselves and they care less about what other people think. As a thinking type, you prefer to win, to be the best, to improve, and to stand out. You want to be and have the edge in the group, to be the smartest person in the room, to be the fastest, the best, the most productive, or the most efficient in handling a task. You value speed, you value action, you value results. As a thinking type, you look at the data, the numbers, the figures. How am I doing? How am I performing in comparison to other people? Am I doing better or worse? In discussions, you think about what's the smart thing to say here? How can I win this argument? What is the weak point of what other person is saying? Thinking types are principally oriented by the idea of reformation. As a thinking type, you believe everything can be improved, everything can be fixed, everything can be corrected, everything is wrong and needs to be corrected by you because you see the better way to make things happen. You can see the flaws, you can see what needs to be improved, you can see what's not working. As a feeling type, you think about and you value the act of giving. As a feeling type, you want to give something to the world. You want to do something positive for others. You want to make a positive impact. You want to make people happy. You want to spread positive feelings. You want to comfort people who feel bad. You want to be a positive influence, a role model, somebody other people can listen to, somebody people can relate to, somebody people can connect to. You want to show integrity, good ethics, good morals. You want to show that you are a person who does the right thing. You want to show that you are a likable person, a good person, a person who does their best, a person who's honest, a person who's real, a person who's authentic. As a feeling type, these are the kind of things that drive you. So when you try to motivate a person, think about what really motivates them. Think about what motivates you. Are you motivated by conflict or discussion or by challenges or games or competitions? Or are you more valued or more motivated by the idea of wanting to be valued, wanting to be liked, wanting to be respected, wanting to be understood? Because those are the principal drives of the feeling types. Fourth, we have judging and perceiving types. So are you a judging type or are you a perceiving type? Judging types are people that value setting and meeting and following goals. Judging types think more long-term. Perceiving types think more short-term. Perceiving types look at immediate changes and adjustments. Perceivers look at new things that are happening right now. Perceivers are learning from the moment and from changes and adjustments. Perceivers are thinking in several options and in several steps. Perceivers think from short-term memory. They think about available thoughts that they have in their head right now. Judging types think about long-term memory, long-term goals, long-term associations, long-term plans and steps that they have been following for many years for a longer time. Judger types are more focused on control. They are more focused on focus. <laughs> they focus their ideas and their thoughts to one singular thing or just a few things. And when judging types, broaden their scope or start looking at more immediate or more short-term things. So when they start adding more variables, they get more easily overwhelmed and stressed. When perceiving types are forced to sit down and narrow down and choose one thing and set a longer goal and stick to the dis and discipline themselves, they become more stressed and more tense. When judging types set a goal and work more long-term, they become more relaxed. When a judging type has time to focus, they feel visibly less tense, their body language is more relaxed, they feel more uh, calm, 
when the perceiving type has to narrow down or to follow a set path or to discipline themselves, they become visibly more tense in their body language and in their energy. That is because judging types are more naturally focused and perceiving types are more naturally adaptable if you're a perceiving type, it's easier for you to make changes in the moment because you feel it releases stress in your shoulders you feel it releases a burden from you when judging types are able to have and focus on one task or when they have one clear role or expectation they feel visibly less relaxed because they feel they have less weight on their shoulders so unfinished tasks in their short-term memory all these thoughts about things they need to be do and all these different tasks and priorities are a burden to the judging types where for the perceiving type it is like juggling so perceiving types feel more free flow and more welcome changing between and switching priorities and making adjustments in the moment and less stressed by these immediate quick thoughts that come up that means you're a judging type if you think more long-term, prefer to think more long-term, and feel less stressed and more relaxed when you think long-term. You're a perceiving type if you prefer to think more short-term, if you think more in targets, if you find it more relaxing and more easy, if you can change your mind at any minute, or if you can uh, be flexible in the situation. Finally, let's talk about assertive and turbulent types. Now, assertive types, they are interesting because they tend to rate themselves more positively. When you're an assertive type, you tend to focus on your strengths, what's good about you, what you like about yourself. When you're a turbulent type, you tend to focus more on your weaknesses, what you need to improve, what you should do differently, what you have, are trying to change about yourself. Turbulent types, they tend to respond more negatively when talking about themselves and tend to overrate the abilities of other people. So turbulent people tend to perceive other people as more confident. They tend to feel that other people are better suited, more skilled, more swift, more efficient, more smart than what they are. Assertive people tend to overrate their abilities. So they tend to assume that they are smarter than everyone else, that they are better, faster, or stronger than everyone else. So assertive types tend to struggle with trusting other people to do tasks properly. Assertive people have a tendency to bully or dominate their environment. Turbulent people have a tendency to let themselves be bullied. Turbulent people tend to struggle with setting boundaries. Because they tend to be more critical of themselves, they also tend to push and overwork themselves more easily. They become more easily stressed, more easily uh, insecure, more easily bored, and more easily drained of energy because they are constantly uh, exceeding their energy or letting other people push them around. Assertive types tend to have more energy, more confidence, more self-esteem, and more curiosity and more motivation. When you're a turbulent type, you feel less good about yourself, and you also feel like you have less energy and more, less motivation than much, more other people do. When you're an assertive type, you feel that you have a lot of energy and a lot of confidence. When you're an assertive type, you feel that uh, you are better or stronger than most people are. Together, if you puzzle out these things, you can figure out your personality type. Another great step is to take my personality test at ericthor.com slash personality minus test. So take my personality test, check out my website, and let me know in the comments below what personality type you are. And if you want a video on the cognitive functions, don't forget to leave a like on this video. Um, if I can get to 100 likes, I'll definitely make a cognitive function video as well.